the airport. Its pilot, Viktor Belenko, had defected. Western authorities examined it minutely. Some of the myths were at last dispelled. It was heavier and simpler in construction than had been supposed. Its range was shorter. It was not a close combat fighter. Its brutally powerful jet engine had poor low-speed performance. The truth was out. The MiG-25 was indeed an extraordinary aircraft, but it was not the one the West had imagined. It continued to set world records throughout the 70s. Sixteen of them were established by Mikoyan chief test pilot Alexander Fedotov, including a world absolute altitude record of almost 121,000 feet, which still stands. The MiG-25's enormous thrust-to-weight ratio made it perfect for climbing almost straight up. Boris Orlov reached 64,000 feet in 2 minutes and 50 seconds. Pyotr Ostpenko reached 96,000 feet in 3 minutes and 10 seconds. The Foxbat was also fast flying straight and level and around a circuit. Mikhail Komarov completed a closed 500 kilometer course at an average speed of 1,850 miles an hour. Svetlana Savitskaya set four world speed and altitude records. Later, she became the second female Soviet cosmonaut. Throughout the 1970s, upgraded and improved versions of the MiG-25 were introduced into service. They were also supplied to a number of foreign countries, Algeria, Egypt, Libya, Syria, Iraq, and India, all bought MiG-25s from the Soviet Union. The MiG-25 is a deadly weapon but it is loved in the Soviet Air Force for a reason nothing to do with its capability as an interceptor or reconnaissance aircraft. Its Russian nickname is Spyotovos, the alcohol carrier, because it carries 300 liters of pure alcohol for the cooling system. At outlying Air Force bases all over Russia, visiting MiG-25s are greeted enthusiastically with a variety of potential alcohol containers. When Rostislav Belyakov took over the MiG design bureau from Artyom Mikoyan, he faced a new problem. The MiG-25 had been designed to counter the high-altitude Mach 3 B-70 Valkyrie. The Valkyrie had never gone into service, but Soviet fighters, missiles and radar systems were generally biased to detect and intercept high-altitude intruders. Now a new threat loomed. America was developing a bomber which could penetrate Soviet airspace at low altitude. The Rockwell B-1 never went into service. Its development was cancelled in 1977 by President Carter. But eventually, the B-1B, a subsonic derivative, was developed. Low-flying bombers, like the B-1 and the B-1B, need to be detected by look-down radar that can see a target against the ground. In the late 70s, Soviet authorities were concerned about B-1Bs coming in over the North Pole carrying cruise missiles. An interceptor to counter such a threat needed to have an extended range, be able to operate autonomously, and have a new radar system. In the late 70s, two new fighters, the MiG-29 and the MiG-31, were being developed by Mikoyan. The MiG-31 developed directly from the MiG-25, but even though they look similar, they are very different. The MiG-25 is a single-seater. The MiG-31 has a crew of two and a completely redesigned front end. Under the skin, it is virtually a new aircraft. The second crew member in the MiG-31 is a weapons system officer who interprets radar information and takes control of the weapons out of the hands of the pilot.
Development of the MiG-31 began in the early 1970s. The MiG-25 design was a good starting point because the new aircraft needed to carry a heavy weapons load and enough fuel to allow for extended periods of loiter time in the air. It also needed to be large enough to carry a powerful new radar system. It would need to be fast, reasonably maneuverable and strong. The MiG-25's enormous Tumansky jet engines were not suitable for the new task. They were designed only for high-speed performance. They were too inefficient and used too much fuel. New, lighter Solovyov turbofan engines were available, but the fuselage had to be stretched to fit them, and the intakes had to be redesigned and enlarged. The fuselage had to be strengthened. The MiG-31 needed to operate freely at low altitude where the dense atmosphere places great stress on aircraft flying at high speeds. By the time development work on the MiG-31 finished in the early 80s, it had evolved into a new aircraft. It was structurally different and powered and armed differently from the MiG-25. And its mission was almost the opposite of the requirements that had brought the MiG-25 into existence. The MiG-31 has special equipment to share information with other aircraft in the group. This allows coordinated attack on incoming targets. The heads-up screen in the cockpit can display radar information, a moving map and the weapons control panel. Special equipment continually measures the coordinates of other MiG-31s in the group, so each one always knows exactly where the others are. At a range of 150 kilometers, the radar can track up to 10 targets at the same time and automatically identify whether they are friends or foes. The four targets the system considers to be the most dangerous are automatically selected by the computer and assigned for simultaneous firing. When several MiG-31s are flying together as a group and they encounter large numbers of targets, it's important to decide which plane picks up which target. The weapon system of the MiG-31s allows this to happen in a coordinated manner and even builds in the possibility of some deceptive maneuvering. None of the MiG-31's rival fighters, the F-14, the F-15, or the Tornado, can talk to their group members through digital links and coordinate a team effort. The MiG-31 has high supersonic cruise capability. It can also fly at higher altitudes than incoming escort fighters. With this performance and its look-down, shoot-down weapons system, it has the advantage of firing from above its opponents while moving at higher speeds than they are. The MiG-31's missiles are not carried on hard points under the wing. They are launched from semi-recessed storage positions 
under the fuselage. The development of the MiG-31 was time-consuming and difficult. There were major systems development problems, and it took several years before the aircraft was cleared for service. Delivery to operational units began in 1983. Priority was given to sending the aircraft to areas considered by the Soviet Air Force to be underprotected. Through the 80s, it was distributed widely across the Soviet Union, from Arkhangelsk in the west to Sakhalin Island, north of Japan. Russian sources say that in the mid-80s, Soviet bases on the Kamchatka Peninsula were feeling pressure from Japanese and American flights close to Soviet airspace. A unit of MiG-31s was sent there, and after they'd been in service for a short time, the number of flights close to the border decreased dramatically. The MiG-25 was not a dogfighter. Neither is its descendant, the MiG-31. Its power comes from high speed, high altitude performance, and the ability to engage an enemy beyond visual range, an enemy the pilot will never set eyes on. War, greed, politics, and personal hardship. The aerospace industry has endured it all. The struggles, the victories, the stories are next. Wings over the world on the Discovery Wings Channel.